Hello lads and ladies and welcome back for another video on the channel. Today we're back for more content. Unfortunately for you guys, you happen to hear me drone on about more Fleetwood Town news. As today Fleetwood have got their new manager in place. Yes, Charlie Adam appointed Fleetwood Town's new gaffer after Lee Johnson was sacked on Saturday the 30th of December. This will be Fleetwood's third manager this season and we've only played 23 league games. Fleetwood have got a history of hiring first, you know, first time managers. You look at your Graham Alexanders your, uh, of this world, you look at you know, Scott Brown, Joey Barton and Charlie Adam adds to that as well. Again, it's an interesting appointment which we'll get into. We'll also give my thoughts and feelings on the rest of the season. But if you're new, please like, please subscribe. 64% of the people that watch these videos aren't subscribed yet. So get subscribed down below. Again, it's free to do so. And please like while you're at it. So Charlie Adam comes in again, hasn't got a wealth of experience in terms of management. He's got a lot of wealth in terms of playing, obviously played for Rangers, Blackpool, Liverpool, um, Reading in that period as well, Stoke City um, as well, scored some famous goals um, for Blackpool, including in the playoff final, also scored from the halfway line against Courtois, um, against Chelsea for Stoke City, um, obviously went to Reading towards the end of his career as well, went back to Scotland um, as well, and a great career overall to play in the Premier League the amount of times he did, to play in the Championship the amount of times that he did. You know, and he played till quite late on in his career. He had a wand of a left foot. Um, and again, his right foot was, wasn't too bad either. Um, and then obviously faded away from football, retired. And then has taken up a role um, at Burnley. Burnley's about an hour away from uh, Fleetwood. And was loans manager and looked after the academy there and was in charge of players going on loan to different football clubs. You've seen that Michael Mellon's been thriving at Morecambe in League Two, didn't quite hit it last season in League One, but creating more chances now in, in a not so good league. Um, and Morecambe are slightly better in that league than they were in League One. He scored, you know, double digits of goals already before even January hit. Again, he got him, you know, that move. And, and you know, as well as working with these younger players, and Fleet was modelled now has been get young players from our academy and get them in the first team. We've seen it with the likes of when we're signing players from Watford for our academy and they're going straight into our first team. One, because the first team hasn't been good enough, but two, because the young players want to play more. But even from our own academy, we've brought through the likes of Barry Bagley that's done okay, Dylan Boyle that did okay for a bit a couple of seasons ago, um... As well, Harrison Holgate, Connor Teals, um, but this will James Hill, who got sold on for a big fee for over a million pounds. Billy Crellin, who went for a decent fee as well. Jay Matetti went for a decent fee. Shaden Morris went for a decent fee as well. Paddy Lane as well, was in the academy for a little bit, the under-21s, the development squad. And Stephen Craney, another Scott um, that Fleetwood manager appointed. Obviously, former teammate of Charlie Adam. He's now at Wigan, is um, you know, doing you know academy work there. Um, so Charlie Adam has he's got history with Burnley, bringing through young players, getting them the right moves to bear its fruits to try and get into the first team or bear the fruits elsewhere. And that's what Fleet would want to do. So I can see the logistics why Fleet would have gone down this way. I know for a fact Charlie Adam goes to a lot of Fleetwood Town games because he's friends with you know some of the higher up at the Archie there and he lives locally as well. He lives you know about probably about 20, 25 minutes away from the actual ground, you know, itself. So he, he tries to watch as much football as he can. It's an appointment that he can get done quickly because he wants to be, you know, a manager. It's an appointment where he wants to kind of show his, you know, worth. He doesn't have to move house. So for his, you know, as a family man, you don't have to move your family and you can still stay locally within the area while doing a job that you love. And Fleet would need something quick before January happens, before a transfer window happens. So it works there as well. So it's been a quick appointment, but also as well, he can work with those younger players as well, like we've just mentioned. Fleetwood do need contacts, and he has been in the game a long time. He's very, you know, worked very well at Blackpool's and Stokes, and you know, he'll know people, you know, within the Premier League as well from being at Burnley as well, and who's maybe available as well. So again, contacts is there. I know he's a young manager. I know he's a young, you know, just come out of the game, and you've sacked a manager with five hundred plus games for a manager with no games. 
And what I say for this is sometimes look at a John Messino at Portsmouth, Danny Cowley, look at the difference that it's done. And it's taken a year, you know, six to 12 months to, to see what Portsmouth are really about. And you're seeing how they're being, you know, being tested day to day. John Messino was, as a manager, a nobody, as they call it, 12 months ago. Now he's probably one of the best managers, if not the best manager in League One for the job he's done this season. So I think you've got to be patient. And anyone saying that, Oh, I don't want it because of his Blackpool playing days. Like we had this with Simon Grayson, we had it with Craney. I think they need to kind of realise it is a point that we've got to get behind. And Lee Johnson, the fans did get behind. Unfortunately, I don't think the players did. Whatever reasons, we don't know what's going on in that training ground at Pilfoot Farm day to day. We see Saturday, the odd Tuesday, and we see a manager with 500 plus games and we see the players not playing well. And then the players got a lot of stake. The manager uh, got a little bit, to be fair. Uh, Brown got more than Johnson. Uh, Johnson didn't have a window, that's fair to say. But when players have got the power at the football club and they don't like that certain manager, player power will always win, unfortunately. So, um, again, if, if players aren't going to play for a manager, you have to get rid as soon as you can. But Charlie Adam is our new manager. Um, again, we've got a connection with Scottish young managers uh, going into the game and promoting youth players. We've got, we, we, this is a, you know, not our first rodeo of doing this. The only manager like, you know, I've been really excited about was Rosler. Granted, he did a really good job and finished you know, in the playoffs. I think we finished fourth in the playoffs with 80 odd points, and we did a really good, you know, a really good job that season as well. When Gray's came in, I wasn't too happy. When Sheridan came in, it was a short term appointment. When Barton came in, wasn't happy at the start. When Johnson came in, I was a little bit not off the idea. I wasn't all for it because I wanted Carl Robinson. This time, because I didn't really want anyone else, I'm looking at this fact that I've always thought it would be Charlie Adam. Another factor is he knows the football club as well, because he got, obviously I mentioned it goes to a lot of the games. He knows what the football club's all about. Uh, you know, obviously being at Blackpool, he's always seen Fleetwood rise up the leagues as well and having friends there as well. I did say yesterday, job for the boys. I just hope it's not one of those. I hope Charlie Adam is, you know, got the job because of his attributes, which he's got, which I've mentioned. That should be the reasons he's getting this job, not just because he's friends with people at the football club. So, for me, I like the appointment. I'm not going to say it's the best appointment in the world because it's not quite, you know, your Jurgen Klopp's, you know, your Josie Mourinho's of this world. It'd be ridiculous. But for Fleetwood, in terms of being realistic, what we can get, we're paying off three managers now. We're paying off Scott Brown, paying off Lee Johnson. Scott Brown's on a deal till, I think, 2025. Johnson on a one till 2026. Unless they get jobs, we're paying off three managers. And then Charlie Adams now come in. Young coach, hungry, wants to prove something, wants to be a manager, and that's what we need. Lee Johnson had the experience and didn't need to show anything, didn't have anything to prove, really. And Charlie Adams seems more of a Fleetwood person than Lee Johnson did. Lee Johnson kind of seemed a bit like, you know, the reality of Fleetwood. He wasn't a Fleetwood person. He was a bit... You know, away from what Fleetwood wanted, what a bit of fight, what a bit of grit, what a bit of determination. We don't care if we lose, we want to go hell for leather and go for it. Lee Johnson was a little bit more softer spoken, a little bit more kind of, you know, softer under the belly. And at Fleetwood, you've got to be tough and you've got to, you know, make sure you're fighting for each other. Barton did that, to be fair, at times as well. Less said about Barton fighting managers, I mean, on the pitch, but for me, it's probably the right appointment in, in, in a few ways. Look, I'd want experience. You we would be looking at your your Carl Robinsons, your Danny Cowleys, even a Dean Holden who's worked with youth before as well. I've you know your Dino Man Manrias who get teams out of trouble. But Charlie Adam is probably the perfect fit in terms of improving players. Ross Wallace coming in as assistant manager. Now Ross Wallace has played for the club before. He knows the football club. The only thing I would want in an assistant manager as a young man. Coach, and I say this about Critchley at Blackpool all the time, I'd like a bit of experience with him. I'd like a Steve Thompson. Steve Thompson worked at Blackpool uh, under Holloway when Blackpool got promoted under Charlie Adam. He's been at press and he's out of work. He speaks very well, you know, live on air as well. Like a Steve Air as well, obviously uh, on the radio a lot as well. Someone experienced that can read the game very well as well. Um, you know, even like a, a Gary Bowyer to come in and have a look at things from a different, you know, angle as well. That would be good. But Ross Wallace knows the football club, scores some big goals for Fleetwood. I think he scored it at Sunderland and Blackpool in the season that he was here. Overall, 
I'm content with the appointment. I'm not over the moon. I need to, you know, not get sucked in because at Johnson, the dribble that he, he, he spoke to you at times, he's so engaging that he, he hooks you in. He's like a Dyson at times. He just hooks you in and you, you engage and you listen. And Barton was like that as well. So he's, he, he's very, you, know, you need to see flat on the ground that we don't listen to everything that they say. You need to see it on the pitch first and then you start listening to what they're saying as well. So a big few weeks coming up. Charlie Adam announced new Fleetwood boss. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments as well. If you could like this video, that'd be massively appreciated. We've had so much content plowed out on the channel lately. So go and check it all out. Get subscribed. We're on the road to 13,000 subscribers. Hopefully... 2024 is a big year for the channel and for Fleetwood. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later. Up the Cods, up the Skybet League 1, Charlie Adams, Red and White Army, it is.